the five number summary and box plots. There's two lesson objectives. Compute the five number summary, draw and interpret box plots. Lesson objective number one. The five number summary simply is the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. Let's look at an example. Every six months, the United States Federal Reserve Board conducts a survey of credit card plans in the U.S. The following data are the interest rates charged by 10 credit card issuers randomly selected for the July 2005 survey. Determine the five number summary of the data. Here we have our raw data, and if we were to take this raw data and put it into StatCrunch, we would see that the smallest number is 6.5 percent, the largest is 14.5, first quartile is 12 percent, second quartile is 13.6 percent, and the third quartile is 14.4 percent. Thus the five number summary is written this way 6.5 percent, 12 percent, 16.6 percent, 14.4 percent, and 15.5 percent. Now again in Minitab, Minitab computes the quartiles a little bit differently so here our Q1 would be 11.475. Our median was 13.6. Our Q3 would be 14.4. Lesson objective number two. These are the directions for constructing a box plot by hand. First step, you determine the upper and lower fences. These are the same fences we've seen before. The lower fence, Q1, minus 1.5 times IQR. The upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Now if you remember, IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Now we draw vertical lines at Q1, the median, and Q3. That will make the rectangle. Then you label the lower and upper fences, and then you draw a line from Q1 to the smallest value that is larger than the lower fence. Draw a line from Q3 to the largest data value that is smaller than the upper fence. These lines are called whiskers. Any data point less than the lower fence or greater than the upper fence are outliers and should be marked by a asterisk star. Let's do an example. This is the United States Federal Reserve Board data. Let's draw a box plot of the data. We're going to use the quartiles computer from StatCrunch. The interquartile range, IQR, is 14.4 minus 12%, Q3 minus Q1, which is 2.4%. That is going to be the length of our rectangle, of our box plot. The upper and lower fences are found by the following formulas. The lower fence turns out to be 8.4%, the upper fence 18%. So if we put our quartiles in, this is Q1, this is Q3, and this is the median, and we draw our rectangle. Now the width of this rectangle is the IQR. The next step, we draw our fences. Here's our fence here, 8.4%, and this one's 18%. We have no values beyond this, but we do have a value down here that's an outlier because it is lower than our 8.4 percent. And now we erase our fences and we have our box plot. The interest rate box plot indicates that this distribution is skewed left as it has a longer tail on the left. This is a lot easier to be constructed in Minitab or StatCrunch and this is the display in Minitab. Here's three reasons for a box plot. First, it helps identify outliers in the data set, as we've seen. It helps give evidence for the shape of the data, whether it be skew left, skew right, or bell shape. And the third one, and probably most importantly, is it's very helpful when comparing multiple data sets. Let's look at an example. Here we have three distributions. The first distribution from the histogram, we see that this is skewed right and this can be seen in the box plot if you notice the right tail is longer than the left tail. If it is bell shaped then 
the left tail is approximately equal to the right tail and the median is approximately in the middle of the rectangle, the box. And the last one, skewed left, we can see that here the left tail is longer than the right tail. So we have another tool to identify the shape of a distribution and that's by a box plot. Comparing groups, here are the months of the year and this is the average wind speed. And very quickly we can see that a box plots allows us to compare multiple data sets very quickly. Very quickly we can identify what is the largest speed. We can identify which month has the largest median wind speed. And we can very quickly see which month has the lowest. Thanks for watching.